In this tutorial, I'm going to be using and exploring some of the watercolour techniques of the amazing American artist, Nita Engels. Let's get started. Nita Engel used masking fluid to preserve the light. The light was very important to her. And as you can see there, I loaded my toothbrush, tapped the excess on the side as I'm doing now, and sort of flicked and spattered on to the cold press watercolor paper. So I'm using a brush now as well to apply some of the masking fluid to preserve the light, and I'm going to allow it to dry naturally. So I'm mixing up some aureolin, which is quite a transparent yellow watercolour. Nice big puddle. A little bit of cerulean here. Quinacridone gold, which is another transparent watercolour. And why I'm mentioning transparent colours is because Nita Engel's very much into sort of preserving the light and using transparent colours. So a little bit of cobalt blue here as well to start with. And what I'm going to do to start this painting is to use her bullseye technique. And that's mixing colours on the paper to start off your painting and also to protect the light source. So I'm spritzing here so the light is going to be on the left here and where the tree is where all the sun rays are coming through so i'm using a flat one inch brush and applying this transparent aureolin all over this light area it's all about the light a little bit of the quinacridone gold as well rinsing my brush now and i'm applying the cobalt blue wet into wet plenty of it and sort of touch the yellow but don't actually mix them physically with the brush I'm going to start tilting so it allows the paint to mix without any brushwork at all and you get a lovely purity of color that way and we'll get hopefully some nice greens as well so I'm going to start tilting my painting in each direction just get it moving if it's not moving enough just spritz it with your spritzer bottle i will put a link in the description below of a nita engel tutorial that is on youtube of her actually demonstrating this technique it's a gem so i definitely recommend it if you're a nita engel fan or going to be a nita engel fan so as you can see there it's a very messy technique so you might want some old towels and lots of paper towels etc to mop up but i'm just sort of keep sort of of turning and tilting something I love to do I felt it was a little bit pale so I'm just adding a little bit more cobalt blue at the top here with my flat one inch brush but as you can see you've got some lovely mixes there with that lovely yellow light in the center and also there'll be white light protected by the masking fluid so I'm mixing up here some Prussian blue and quinacridone gold you could use raw sienna or even burnt sienna so I'm painting this well it should be wet in wet it's actually dried off a little bit there but I'm still tilting using my one inch brush I'm using the spritzer bowl just to get that paint moving and it's gorgeous because it creates some wonderful sort of effects as well so just keep tilting in different directions as well to enable me to use the pouring technique that Nita Engel used, I'm using here an empty camera film case. I've mixed up a lot of watercolour, a mixture of Payne's Grey and Quinacridone Gold. I've also mixed up a puddle of watercolour in my palette and I'm going to use the pipette to apply it to the painting, wet into wet. Um, she actually used sort of squeezy bottles as well to apply the paint and then tilt and you get some wonderful happy accidents it's quite a nice way of applying the watercolor to the paper without touching it the more you kind of touch the watercolor paper with the brush than the paint the more it kind of gets muddy and you can lose your light so i'm also pouring this out of the empty camera film case as well and tilting you can tilt in lots of different directions but also diagonally as well just to see what happens you never know what's going to happen but as long as you preserve the light you can allow the watercolour to have a mind of its own. So I'm mixing up here some Prussian blue using my size 10 brush, lots and lots of paint, pretty much like a milky consistency. And I've got a little bit of burnt sienna there as well. So it's a very sort of dark blue green. I'm just applying that now, I ran out of paint. <laughs> not used to this pouring technique but look at that just tilting and of course it's mixing with the colors underneath as well which is beautiful and I'm not really using the brushes at all I'm just allowing the paint to move on its own 
and remember you can use a spritzer bottle if your paint's drying a little bit so there's a little bit more prussian blue here with some of the yellow so it's a lovely sort of milky green and i'm spattering this and again this is something nita engel did she spattered wet on wet and wet on dry and tilting as well to allow these little spots to move to create that almost abstract busy look of nature so I'm mixing up here some more of that Prussian blue and you can use some burnt sienna again to make it a really dark green and I'm applying this in the gaps where the sun rays are so it's dark against light wet into wet using my pipette applying the paint not touching the paper and pouring it as well and again going back to that tilting seeing what happens and look at that it looks very atmospheric the other thing that Nita Engel used was salt not too much salt but enough to create some wonderful texture so I'm applying this now to the damp paper and I'm going to allow my painting to dry naturally to allow the salt to work what I'm doing now is I am brushing off some of the salt and also a little bit of the masking fluid to rag it, ragged up some of those edges to make it look more natural when I take all of the masking fluid off later. So I'm actually going to print with my crumpled up piece of paper towel. It's something else that Nita Engel did quite a lot. She actually made her own stamps to create her own textures and the look of foliage. And as you saw there, I spritz with water some of those marks to make them look more natural. So I'm mixing up some creamy Prussian blue with the quinacridone gold. And I'm printing wet on dry with an old piece of scourer. Just gently printing on the paper to create some lovely textured marks, keeping it really random, changing the direction of the sponge so you don't get a patterning effect. You want to create sort of abstract sort of effect there. As you can see the salt left some wonderful light textures as well. So I'm going back with my pipette and I'm squirting on some dark Prussian blue with the burnt sienna and tilting. So it's wet on dry in some places, a little bit damp in others. But I want to create random effects by tilting in different directions. Be open to sort of accidents, just see what happens and try to sort of tilt your paper in the direction you want. Try to control it as much as you want. You're almost trying to control chaos. But just look out for those interesting things that nature has that it does look so abstract. It's the light that's important here. And as you can see, I'm just turning all the time, giving it a little spritz, not too much, because I'm trying to control it. And you can spritz in little areas and get the paint moving. The worst that can happen is just spritz it all away and have another go. Don't worry. Experiment. See what happens keep tilting remember to put an old towel down or something to collect all the paint as well so i'm using the pipette to draw with here as well just really sort of abstracty marks um, at this sort of sort of beginning middling stage you can really have fun with it and bring it all together later so experiment and see what happens and as you can see, I've removed all of the masking fluid and I'm going to use my spritzer bottle to wet the light area here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix up some Payne's Grey with some Burnt Sienna using my size 10 round brush. I'm also adding some ultramarine with that dark colour as well, just to kind of have a couple of different darks. And I'm painting this tree here just left of centre, wet on dry, adding a little bit of blue as well, but a touch of cobalt blue there to add a bit of coolness where the sun is hitting the tree as well. I can see it in the photograph, but that's just how I see it. Um, so this is pretty much the first time I've used the brush on paper and I've used it so I can direct it of course as well. So I'm just softening the left side and taking off some of the paint with my paper towel to create that sort of soft sort of look there on the tree. Adding a little bit more dark, painting damp into damp. This dark is quite creamy and I'm using my size 10 brush leaving little gaps as well so trying to emulate that sort of soft light on that tree there 
and adding a touch of blue as well wet into wet and then lifting off with a paper towel to control the light so i'm painting the tree here right of the center sort of damp into damp i've added a touch more ultramarine here in Payne's gray and i'm just painting this sort of larger at the bottom it gets thinner as it goes up there I'm using a Neef brush size 8. It's like a reservoir brush. You could also use a rigger or a twig to paint some of the smaller branches damp into damp using those same colours. Burnt Sienna Ultramarine, Ultramarine Payne's Grey. If your paint's running too much, just wait a little bit or make the paint slightly thicker. They're almost silhouetted against that light sky. What I'm doing now is I'm mixing up some yellow with a little bit of the ultramarine and I'm just sort of using that Neef brush again. Again, you can use those alternative brushes and just sort of flicking on some yellow green leaves. Rinsing my brush now and I'm going to get a pinch of Prussian blue. I'm going to add some of the yellow to that to get some brighter greens, sort of mid greens rinse in my brush again adding a touch more yellow to that to make it a little bit sort of brighter and yellowy and painting this sort of wet into wet on top of those yellow leaves try just to paint some areas once don't go back and forth that's where you can get a little bit muddy so I'm using some cerulean here with the yellow with a touch of the ultra and it's sort of a grayish greenish color here with that hint of cerulean to the right hand side the leaves look almost like a they've got a blue tinge to them and I don't want them to come forward too much they're almost kind of in shadow but they're not dark and I'm just again painting in quite an abstract way letting my brush dance damp into damp onto this paper here loading that brush again and just painting a little bit more foliage here just on that branch make sure you keep lots of that light painting a little bit more darks here damp into damp with a touch of yellow ochre into that Payne's grey there flicking my brush adding a bit of the Prussian blue as well to create this sort of mid to dark green again using very sort of loose marks and just carrying on the darks here and there just a little bit at the top almost overlaying that sort of blue grey green colour there even though it's still damp, it looks like it's in front because of the darker tonal value. So mixing up some Payne's Grey here with some of the yellow and Prussian blue and just sort of picking out areas. And as you can see, I'm just sort of sweeping my brush here and there, half closing my eyes, just almost letting go a bit. But also keep in mind that you want to reserve sort of light and mid-tone areas. It can be so tempting to keep painting. So I'm sort of just being mindful of that. I'm using a clean damp brush and just cutting into that light there to create those soft rays. You've got some lighter tonal values and just softening areas around here. And if you lose your light, just wet it and lift off with a paper towel as I've just did there. So I'm mixing up a little bit more Prussian blue and Payne's grey and just painting some darks on that tree trunk to create the look of dark leaves, sort of cutting across, again creating this layered look, going across the painting here and there, flicking my brush. Remember to keep loading your brush as well and just painting damp into damp, some darker rays on the outside edges of those rays, on the edge of the paper almost. So you've got those real dark areas going down to the bottom left hand corner of the painting. And what I'm doing now is I'm just spritzing in the direction again as um, Nita Engel does to control and tilt away from that light area. And I'm just mixing up sort of a light green here using the yellow and Prussian blue with my size 10 brush and just spattering light leaves here and there, wet into wet or even wet into damp. And you may actually get a few cauliflowers doing that as well when you have wet paint going into drying paint. So I'm mixing up quite a dark green here, the Prussian blue with the burnt sienna and spattering wet into wet some of the darks to get some lovely random marks just here and there using my hand to protect the painting and my table. And I'm using a little bit more dark here 
damp into damp using the Prussian blue and the burnt sienna with my size 10 brush. I lost a little bit when I spritzed away and I wanted a little bit of more drama in this bottom left hand corner going into that light in the tree with those sun rays there and carefully using the tip of my brush on the other side. I'm really mindful I don't want to lose my light so just having another little spritz to soften and get some of these darks to run down to create an atmospheric effect as well lovely soft light so mixing up here some of the well about four colors here I think Prussian blue a little bit of Payne's gray I think I had a touch of pink and burnt sienna but basically you could mix up ultramarine and burnt sienna and I am painting damp into damp some darker branches here over those sort of lighter greens darker greens and tree trunks etc and the lighter branches and I'm just sort of layering this over the top of that damp paint so make sure your paint is quite creamy otherwise you don't want it to leak and blend into the greens etc if you're worried about it, this allow your painting to dry and then do that wet on dry just lifting off some of the paint here just to get a little bit of the light back it's all about the light I felt the tree trunk was a little bit too dark so I'm just adding some Payne's grey damp into damp here just to fill in a little bit more dark and a few more dark rays damp into damp here and there on the outside left sort of bottom edge and towards the bottom of the painting there using my size 10 round brush. Adding a few more branches here and there using that Neef brush, damp into damp. I'm just using a clean damp brush to wet the sun rays area, then lift off with a paper towel to create the look of light going into that left hand corner there. So it's quite effective, lovely soft sun rays coming through that tree. And I'm just using that synthetic brush just to sort of lift off some of those more stubborn areas there and then using my paper towel to lift off again using the synthetic brush to lift off some sun rays at the top and to the side and as you can see it really does build up and it's almost like the star of the show here this light coming through these rays of light coming through this tree here so just spend a little bit of time lifting off and make sure you use clean areas of the paper towel so you don't contaminate the areas of the sun rays. So I'm mixing up some yellow and the Prussian blue here and just spattering damp into damp just here and there where I can see some lovely light areas. Mixing up some more Prussian blue, adding a touch of water and adding this sort of light to mid green just here and they're really loading my size 10 brush. Be careful that you don't get any spots of green on that really sort of light area there. So you might want to cover that with a paper towel. So I'm going to allow my painting to dry and I'm using that printing or stamping technique to create some dark foliage using the scourer brush. I've mixed up some dark paint, the Prussian blue, the burnt sienna with a touch of Payne's grey and just working my way around there, especially that sort of left hand corner, building up those layers to create that sort of light coming through. So you want the dark to make the lights look lighter, working my way around the left hand side, spritzing and softening here and there as well. Another little spatter here and there just to create some more darker textures. And I am covering this light area of the paper towels, worried I'd get some dark spots on there. So just working my way around to create some more darks around that light to really bring the light out um, to create the lightest of lights using a little bit more green. Again, if you want to protect that light area, do keep it covered. Just carrying on spattering some of this texture here. There's so much of it as you look into the painting. And I'm using the Neef brush again to paint in some branches, etc. Really pulling out the detail here and there. If you have lost your light, you can use white gouache to mix with your watercolours or use it on its own. Now, Nita Engel doesn't like using white watercolour or white gouache. I believe it's because you can lose the transparency. 
but I feel sometimes when you've worked your way into a painting and you have lost your light it's really great at rescuing your paintings and to create sort of really lovely bright colours and I'm mixing up the yellow the white here and the Prussian blue and I'm just spattering just here and there and using the brush to paint some lighter greens I am using it sparingly just to create a few lights here and there one of the things that Nita Engel says in her books is to choose materials that suit your style of painting so you may not like all of the sort of techniques here use the ones that can sort of aid you in your work and I love using white um, I always head for that I like to mix it at the end or just use it on its own as I'm doing here creating random marks etc so what I love about using some of the techniques of amazing artists like Nita Engel is that you go forward in your work it opens up ideas but you also develop your own style your own techniques the ones that you like and suit your work so you can pick and choose and that's the wonderful thing about art so it's a good time now to allow your painting to dry what I'm doing here is I am creating a bouquet technique it's something that happens with photography but you can actually apply it to painting and it's actually lifting off something that Nita Engel does but it's in a kind of a stylized way so I'm using a circle stencil and a sponge, clean water and paper towel to lift off these circles varying the sizes to create the wonderful light and atmospheric effect of this bouquet technique. And here is the finished painting. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, experimenting with watercolour, but using some of the techniques of the amazing American artist, Nita Engel. I really hope you're inspired to have a go using some of these techniques and painting this gorgeous photograph as well. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel where you'll get updates of my latest tutorials. And if you want to get access to my weekly exclusive Patreon tutorials, details about that can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy experimenting, exploring and creating. Bye for now.